I've played many games during my time, but none have really impressed me like this one. These things are so scary! Oh, he moved! Elden Ring, The Last of Us, garbage. This game, masterpiece. Antarctica 88 is a horror game that came out in 2020 with no sequels, disappointingly. And I thought that it would take a few more games to say that Paratopic was better. I was wrong. Not only is this game just blatantly boring, but it's buggy, stupid, and I went through all the stages of grief in under two hours. But here I am, making a review about a game you've never played. My name is Josh, also known as Jorjuanana, and I hope you enjoy. So if you didn't know, which you probably don't, uh, this game is heavily inspired by the movie named The Thing. It's a story about a group of scientists who discover this creature that can morph into other creatures, and it, it basically kills them all. Sorry for the spoilers about a movie that came out in 1982, but Antarctica 88 has pretty much the same setting, but the monsters are nothing like the main point of the film. One of them is a crawling insect that deals way too much damage, another one is the hunchback of Notre Dame naked, and the last one is the Demigorgon from Stranger Things. You see how random this game is? But what I like to do for these type of videos is guide you through my adventure, taking the time to stop and point out certain things like the gameplay or music as we go along. Let me begin with my amazing introduction to this game. Hold on. What? I'm pressing no buttons. I'm pressing no buttons. I'm pressing no buttons at all. So yeah, that was the first of many glitches throughout my entire journey, being that the game for some reason unloaded my entire clip into the corner of this wardrobe, which of course resulted in me having to restart because you have to shoot this vent open in order to escape. After restarting, I made my way through the cave, and if you're wondering why the monsters aren't attacking me, it's because on my second playthrough I set the difficulty to ghost, meaning the monsters don't reply to me, and they don't see me, so I can just play through again without having much resistance. Anyways, I encountered my first Demigorgon before the game cuts into how we got there a few hours ago. Which, already I had so many questions, but the main one being the confusion behind the pause menu. Like, am I going insane? Why is there a separate page for the pause menu? Isn't the entire thing classified as a pause menu? I'm pissed off already. Don't worry, it gets better, because my next objective is to get warm. And then I have to restore electricity and put gas in the generator before going into the lab, which seems to be in almost every horror game that I've played thus far. Once I was inside, I was greeted with a message from the radio, stating that everyone had moved to the drilling station in order to avoid the monsters rummaging about. This is a great time to point out, by the way, that this game is in Russian, which may explain the weird phrases throughout the game. I also want to point out that the cutscenes are just fantastic and are some of the best I've seen in gaming. I mean, take a look at this one before encountering the Demogorgon. I'm, I'm making real good use of my PlayStation 5, aren't I? With the news of the drilling station harboring our friends, we fix the snowmobile and prepare for in incredible, incredible gameplay. gameplay. Yeah, I hated this part, mainly because the tight turns barely gave me any sign that there was going to be a turn there. It's like I have to die in order to know what to do next. Uh, but within the drilling station, I was met with a dead body and a new key card in order to access the inner parts of the laboratory. Now this is where you get access to all the goods. A grenade launcher, flamethrower, flashlight, and an epic cutscene where you find your dad going ba ba ba. This is the part where you put your weapons to the test, and the sensitivity, because seriously, this game's sensitivity is worse than a migraine. I have this on the highest level possible, and I turn slower than old Bloodborne loading screens. After dying multiple times due to my incompetence with aiming a gun, I reached the inner parts of the cave where the ceiling collapsed and my dad came to rescue me. So now we're pretty much back to where the game started, and finally, I was able to fight the Demigorgon. The final fight! Bam! <laughs> that was it? Yeah, I don't know why it had That's its own it cutscene. It made it look like he was the final boss or something. Uh, but nope, you'll encounter an unholy amount later on. So now with a new shotgun and a few hints to guide my path, I was able to find my father's hat. 
because he died. I'm sure this was meant to be a shock, but the fact that I died multiple times in the cave from absolute trash controls, I'm sure our dad was having the same issues. He left us a parting gift though, a piece of dynamite that we will use to escape the cave. So now we make our way to the radio tower in order to call an evac, but of course nothing goes smoothly in these type of games. Not because of creative and fun obstacles, but because my flamethrower was glitched to my crotch, and therefore, I had to put my life back in order first. Besides, even the monsters are bored of this game. I'm sure they're not going to put up much of a threat either. This is also a good time to mention the music. This game has some of the most generic, suspenseful music I have ever heard. It's tasteless and boring, and it's the same track over and over and over and over and over. Looking back on the game, I maybe identified three tracks, and that's it. And during the action sequences, which there are quite a few, it just played it over and over. It wasn't even like entertaining. It's just the same. Dun 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 dun. dun. I'd rather listen to Baby Shark while my nipples get twisted rather than listen to this garbage soundtrack again. Even Paratopic had great music for the game that it was, but Antarctica '88, it's just not it. Now, upon reaching the radio tower, I found an assault rifle and I was able to call in an evac. However, one thing stands in my way. My dad! So it turns out he killed everyone on the team in order to preserve the creatures and his studies. I was appalled by this, of course. The glare in my eyes expressed my unyielding rage. There's only one thing left to do. Uh, uh... Yeah! 360! <laughs> With Pup Pup gone now, uh, the monsters are unleashed for an almighty battle of running in circles and grenade launches. Now I would be lying if I said I didn't have a little bit of fun, but only a little, don't get the wrong idea here. With the dynamite we got earlier from that dead guy, I forgot to mention that, I need to basically blow up this hole in order to reach the helicopter. Seems pretty easy, right? Yay, wait. Did that seriously not work? So it turns out, on my first playthrough, the game glitched and the dynamite didn't break the ice, leaving me befuddled and scrambling through the caves to find more. On my second playthrough, the dynamite worked and I was able to leave and beat the game, but that one glitch in my first playthrough caused about 25 minutes of pure agony as I tried to figure out what I was doing wrong here. And for once, you know, it wasn't my fault. With the ice finally blasted away, we reached the evac, harboring a surprise guest, and then I, I got the bad ending. I certainly did. But here's the thing that kicks my shins and runs away. There's also a good ending and a medium ending. What is a medium ending? What does that even mean? Like, I don't... There were some design choices with this game that just feel all over the place. But yeah, that was my entire adventure. And yeah, Antarctica 88 was certainly a game that I played. This whole experience felt all over the place. It had no rhythm to it. It seemed as though I was playing parts of a game, but never got the full thing. One of the reasons why I thought it was such a bad game is because there was no substance or really a desire for me to keep on playing. Many games have an incredible world to explore, a touching story to unfold, or engaging combat that keeps the player there. And I despise leaving a game in my collection unfinished. I played Red Dead Redemption 2 in 2018 when it came out, and I never finished it. And four years later, I was still annoyed by it, so I actually went back and played the game, and now it's one of my favorite games of all time. But my point here is that I don't like to leave a game unfinished. But with this game, I was completely content with not finishing it, and still making this video. Now, I'll give credit where credit is due, and that's the fact that this game has good weapon variety. I do like the grenade launcher, I think the corpse launches are funny, but that's it. That's strictly the only positive note I can give about this game. Again, I bring up Paratopic because it was cheaper, and it was better. Paratopic has good music, an interesting atmosphere, and an intriguing, ambiguous story that makes you ponder. Even if the game does a bad job of giving you the answers or enough clues to put the picture together, at least it makes you think. Antarctica 88 has none of that. Yes, maybe better gameplay, but the sensitivity was such a struggle that I'm leaning towards it being of equal quality. I don't even recommend playing this game for fun or for the laughs because it's just, it's just boring and yeah, I did laugh a couple of times, but it's not worth the two hours of torture. I also want to point out that during my second playthrough, like I mentioned earlier, 
I had the monsters set to ghost, so they wouldn't attack me. And I finished this game in about 30 minutes, which really tells me how much content this game really has, and how much I sucked during my first playthrough, because geez, an hour and a half of just fighting those creatures is... is it's so... An, uh, uh, I mean, you get what I'm saying. But overall, Antarctica 88 was the worst horror game I've ever played. Terrible gameplay, an awful soundtrack, the most generic story possible. And you know what? I'm gonna give this game negative 10 Demigorgons out of 300,000. Like I mentioned with my Paratopic review, there are games out there that are so bad they're good, but this is just plain torture. Like, I'm good. I can delete this game knowing that I made a video about it and forget its existence for my conscious. But that's about it. Guys, I appreciate you watching the video as always. I'm gonna plug in my Patreon. If you want to further support there, you can get access to exclusive behind the scenes, polls, you know, things like that. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and of course, stay safe. I'm a shape